Hi everyone, dear students, learners, and pharma professionals. Good day to all. So, in the series of our presentation, so far we have discussed about biopharmaceutics, its introduction and absorption. What is absorption? Followed by the mechanism and in connection to the today's topic we have been discussing about factors influencing drug absorption and bioavailability so under this so far we have discussed about physical chemical factors and we have been discussed just prior to this about the pharmaceutical factors or dosage form related factors well so hope you all clear with those concept and let's move on to the today's content the factors influencing drug absorption and bioavailability the patient related factor so among the factors so this is the last one patient related factors so let us see what are the content which covers under this factor so in the patient related factor there are various factors such as age gastric emptying time intestinal transit time gastrointestinal ph disease state blood flow through git and gastrointestinal content in which food interaction gastrointestinal fluid drugs and other normal contents as well as pre systemic metabolism by luminal enzyme gut wall enzyme bacterial enzyme and hepatic enzyme so these are the content what we are going to discuss in this patient related factor now let's see one by one well before dealing with the patient related factors let's know what is the anatomy and physiology of gastrointestinal tract with the help of a diagram so saying about the gastrointestinal tract there are number of components in their and their primary functions are secretion digestion and absorption the complete gi tract starting from mouth to rectum it has a layer of mucus secretion and this mucus secretion always keep the gastrointestinal tract fleshy as well as watery and the major role of it is involved in absorption of food or any exogenous molecules whatever the content we are taking by oral route it get digested over there and it get absorbs either in the stomach or the undigested food in the stomach food or the component in the stomach will reach the intestine there it may get absorbed or in the even the content which is not digested in the small intestine it will move on to the colon or large intestine and they will be digested over there if not it will be getting eliminated in the form of waste material so this is overall the tract about the GIT and here the major functional compounds in GIT are uh, starting from the mouth the uh, main thing is about stomach small intestine which includes duodenum jejunum and ileum and large intestine nothing but the colon so these all differs from anatomy and its function its secretion and ph some place to place it varies so as a brief let's know which is interrelated to the drug absorption all this thing so the first one is about mouth so the mouth ph is 6.8 roughly and the surface area is very smaller here in case of mouth lipophilic drug neutral and basic drugs generally get absorbed and here the drug get absorbed directly to the systemic circulation whatever the dosage form we are using in the buccal cavity so the buccal cavity has a direct secretion through the mucus blood supply to the cheek so it will be getting absorbed and it will bypass the first pass metabolism and thereby it reaches 100% bioavailability so that once the content gets swallowed and only if it reaches the stomach it undergo the process of first pass metabolism so here the uh, reaching of drug to the stomach is not a case the drug will be getting absorbed in the stomach sorry uh, it will be absorbed in the cheek and it reaches the system circulation directly so the next is about the stomach so the ph of the stomach varies from 1 to 
um, based upon the content of the stomach if it is empty it will be going very higher acid strong acid and keep on uh, the content in the stomach by either meal or anything else the ph slightly increases up to 3 in the surface area compared to the other part of git lower git it is quite moderate and here the drugs such as lipophilic neutral and acidic will be getting absorbed properly but compared to intestine the surface area also will be lesser and absorption also quite lesser in case of stomach next is about the small intestine and in case of small intestine the ph ranges from 5 to 7.5 it varies and the surface area is quite larger in compared to the other gi part the surface area of small intestine is quite larger and all types of drug will be getting absorbed instead saying specifically maximum drug absorption takes place in small intestine through microvilli which is present in the small intestine and thereby it goes to hepatic circulation and then it process for the drug metabolism and leads to absorption process the next one is our large intestine so saying about large intestine the ph will be ranging from 7.9 to 8 and comparatively to the small intestine the surface area is quite smaller as well as the drug absorption all types of drug will be getting absorbed uh, but a lesser extent whereas in small intestine the absorption will be very strong enough whereas in case of large intestine it will be quite lesser compared to it and the next is about the bile so saying here about the bile this bile secretion will be ranging from 7.8 to 8.6 and which mainly aids for absorption of lipophilic drug and also sometimes it supports for the route of secretion of active secretion of polar drugs or metabolites which we call it as an enterohepatic cycle and the ph which ranges from 7.8 to 8.5 and it is quite small in nature the absorbed surface area is very small compared to the other part of the git and the last one is about the rectum the ph ranges from 7.5 to 8 and the surface area is very smaller uh, compared to all other uh, GIT uh, specifically about stomach small intestine and large intestine and all types of drug will be getting absorbed and about a half of the absorbed drug will go directly into the systemic circulation upon administering in the rectum specifically in the case of suppose trees uh, when we are applying the drug with most of the drug will directly goes to the systemic circulation so this is what about the physiology of a GIT. Well, let's move on to the factors now. So among the factors, the first factor is age. So saying about age, we obviously consider infant as well as uh, geriatrics. And in case of infants, the gastric pH, specifically saying the gastric pH is high and the intestinal surface area and blood flow to the GIT is low which results in altered absorption pattern compared to that of the adults. So that is a common condition and in early elderly patients, in elderly patients it causes impairment in drug absorption including altered GI, GI emptying times as well as decreasing intestinal surface area and GI blood flow. So they have a low blood flow as well as low surface area in intestinal region and high incident of achlorhydria and bacterial overgrowth in small intestine. So these are all the various conditions in geriatrics. So this will mostly affect the drug absorption in case of geriatric. So than a normal adult or comparing to a normal adult, the pediatric as well as geriatric may have different physiological condition. Uh, while administering a dosage to a infants or a geriatric patient, care should be taken considering their physiological parameters. So in case of gastric emptying and motility, we have a process of various condition. So what before discussing about the process, let's know what is gastric emptying. So saying about gastric emptying, the passage of content from the stomach to small intestine 
is called as gastric emptying. So there are some condition where there is a chances of rapid gastric emptying which occurs properly. So it is majorly occurs in uh, four conditions. The first is about a rapid onset of action in case of sedatives. So in such condition, the rapid emptying may be supporting this type of drugs. The second one is about dissolution of drugs which occurs in intestine. So such as entry coated tablet. So whenever you are preferring an entry coated tablet, this rapid emptying time will be supporting the same. The next is about drug which is unstable in gastric fluid. So uh, a drug which has been unstable in stomach, so that can be easily or quickly emptied thereby the absorption will be better in the other lower part of GIT. The fourth one is about a drug which has been absorbed, best absorbed from the distal part of small intestine. So then in the proximal stage, uh, some drugs will be having better absorption in the distal part. Examples, vitamin B12. So this is one condition where rapid emptying will be desirable or advisable of. And the next, there are some condition where the drug will be having low absorption. So delaying, delaying in gastric emptying will be recommended. So some condition. So previously we have been discussing about where all the rapid absorption or rapid emptying is necessary. But here we are going to say about what are the a condition where the delay in gastric emptying will be recommended. So saying about this condition, we have some five conditions where this delaying in gastric emptying is needed of. The first is about uh, the food which promotes drug dissolution and absorption such as griseofulvin. So it, this is one condition and the second is about the disintegration and dissolution of dosage form which is promoted by the gastric fluid. The third condition is about the drug which dissolves slowly as example of griseofulvin. The fourth one is the drug which irritates the gastric mucosa such as aspirin, phenylbutazone, nitrofurantoin. And the last one is about the drug which absorbed from the proximal part of small intestine and prolonged drug absorption site of contact is desirable such as vitamin B2 and vitamin C. So that is what the condition is of. And saying about gastric emptying. So gastric emptying obviously follows first order process and there are several parameters which is used to quantify this gastric emptying. One is gastric emptying rate. So gastric emptying rate is nothing but the speed at which the stomach content empties into the intestine. Next is gastric emptying time. Is the time required for the gastric content to move to the small intestine. The last is gastric emptying half-life. Is the time taken for half of the stomach content to get emptied. So these are the various uh, quantifying parameters. So how, what is the content, what is the time duration taking place, what is the half duration of half content which has been getting emptying. So these are some of the related parameters which is used to measure or know about gastric emptying. And now let's discuss about the various factors which has been influencing the gastric emptying. So in various conditions, uh, before going to uh, discussing about the gastric emptying, how does this gastric emptying can be measured? So in in vivo condition, this gastric emptying of a drug can be measured or studied by using radio opaque contrast material such as using barium sulfate or tagging the drug with a radio isotope and scanning the stomach at a regular interval time. So by you, either by scanning using a radio isotope or either by using any other material or radio opaque material you will be using such as barium sulfate. Thereby we can able to know what, what is the gastric emptying process. So by knowing this we can able to know what are the factors which is affecting this gastric emptying. So in this condition let's discuss one by one. The first is about volume of meal. So larger the bulk of the meal longer the gastric time and however an 
initial rapid time of emptying is absorbed with a large meal volume and initial lag time is emptying in emptying of small volume of milk so this is what about it in the condition so rapid emptying will be absorbed in a long large meal volume this is one condition next is about next factor is about composition of the meal so the rate of gastric emptying for various food materials will be going in such an order that carbohydrate proteins and fats so in case of fat the rate of emptying will be quite delayed or late the next factor is about physical state and viscosity of the meal so in case of liquid meal which has been taking uh, by orally the it takes less time when compared to that of the solid meal and similarly higher the viscous the high viscous nature will be have getting slower emptying time so less viscous will be getting quick emptying next factor is giph so the gastric emptying rate is retarded at lower stomach ph and promoted at alkaline ph the inhibitory effect of various acid on gastric emptying decreases with increase in molecular weight so as molecular weight increases the gastric emptying will be decreasing uh, such as hydrochloric acid followed by acetic acid lactic acid followed by tartaric acid and finally citric acid so this is the order of this various acids based on its emptying time and that well to its continuation exercise so vigorous physical training or exercise will lead to uh, slow one or retarding the gastric emptying process and body posture gastric emptying will be much favored while in a standing position or laying down on a right side of the body and the next is about the most important thing emotional status so the stress and anxiety will promoting the gastrointestinal motility whereas depression will be reducing the gastric emptying process the last uh, related to this about is uh, drugs there are some drugs which will be uh, retarding the gastric emptying such as antacids anticholinergic narcotic analgesic and tricyclic antidepressant whereas some drugs such as metoclopramide domperidone cisapred these will be stimulating the gastric emptying well let's see the other factors which is involved are the disease condition in case of disease uh, condition like gastroenteritis gastric ulcer pyloric stenosis diabetes and hypothyroidism it slow one or it retards the gastric emptying whereas partial or total gastrectomy duodenal ulcer and hyperthyroidism will promote the gastric emptying time next factor is about electrolyte and osmotic pressure water isotonic solution and solutions of low salt concentration empty the stomach rapidly whereas higher electrolyte concentration decreases the gastric emptying next is about temperature so it is better to take an optimum temperature of food material higher or lower temperature of uh, food which has been taken or fluid which has been ingested will be reducing or will be affecting the process of gastric emptying so these are all the some of the factors which is interrelated to the gastric emptying process so with this uh, we can conclude about it and we can move on to the next factor so next factor is intestinal transit so saying about intestinal transit so small intestine is a major site for absorption of most of the drug a long intestinal transit time is described for complete drug absorption so that is what here in the condition to for the complete process it will be taking place so this transit time for the content will be differing from the region of intestine such as in intestinal region duodenum the transit time will be uh, remaining for around 5 minutes whereas in jejunum it takes around for 2 hours and in ileum the gastric trans intestinal transit time resides for around 3 to 6 hours and cecum 0.5 to 1 hours finally about colon 
six to twelve hours. So this is about the various transit time of different region of the intestine. So saying about the process which delayed in intestinal transit is desirable for. So where it is needed or where it is demanded. So drugs that dissolves or release the release the drug slowly from the dosage form, such as sustained release product. In such condition, this intestinal transit delay will be desirable. And the other conditions are so the drug that dissolves only in the intestine, entry coated formulation, whereas it don't release in stomach or in the lower GIT tract, so it have a better absorption in the intestinal part. So such form of drugs, if we are delaying the in transit time, that will be much better. The next one is about the drug absorption for this from the site specific site of intestine as we discussed earlier vitamin specific several vitamins most of the vitamins have better absorption in intestinal region and saying about the other aspects this intestinal transit it is majorly influenced by various factors such as food disease and drugs so drugs like metoclopramide promotes intestinal transit enhances the absorption of rapidly soluble drugs whereas some drugs such as anticholinergic will be retarding the intestinal transit and promotes the absorption of poorly soluble drugs so these are some of the conditions about intestinal transit well let's move on to the next factor well about the gastrointestinal ph so saying about the ph uh, the gi ph generally increases one as it moves on from stomach to the colon and rectum so the pH at the stomach it will be around 1 to 3 and gradually the pH will be getting increases as it moves on to the lower part of GIT and this variation in the pH also affects the drug absorption so what are the factors which comes under the uh, gastrointestinal pH let's see one by one the first is about disintegration so the disintegration of some drugs from its pH will be much sensitive while entry coated tablet which has been coated will be dissolving only in the intestinal pH specifically at the intestinal pH it won't dissolve in the acidic environment or lower acidic uh, highly acidic pH it's released only in the intestinal pH region so that is one condition where the gastrointestinal pH will be responding towards or interrelated to the dosage form is off. The next one is about dissolution. So a large number of drug whose solubility is greatly affected by the pH, either it might be weak acid or weak base, whatever may be. So the, that will be an, having a major impact in dissolution. Weakly acidic drug dissolves rapidly in the alkaline pH of the intestine whereas the basic drug dissolves in the acidic pH of the stomach. So this is what or where the pH is playing a role in dissolving or dissoluting the drug. The next is about absorption. So as we have been discussing about this absorption so far several times, uh, drug PKA, acidic or basic, ionized or unionized, this all has a major influences in the drug absorption, similarly which is interlinked or related to the pH of the various GI parts. The next is about stability. So GI pH also affects the chemical stability of the drug. So the acidic st stomach pH affects some drugs and it degrades penicillin G, erythromycin, even proteins. So various protein drug delivery has a major challenging aspects in drug delivery through oral route because they may get degraded by the gastric pH or gastric enzymes. So that condition has to be overcome. So some, so when the drug is been affecting by this gastric pH or acidic pH, so that drug can be formulated as a pro-drug manner. So example, carindacillin and erythromycin estrolate. So these are all the various pro drug because by having this pro drug approach we can make the dosage form or the drug stable at the acidic environment. The next is about diseased states. So next factor. So in saying about diseased factor various diseases 
so several disease state will be influencing the rate and extent of drug absorption uh, some major classes of uh, drug diseases and uh, influences are there so uh, some major classes are gastrointestinal diseases cardiovascular diseases and hepatic diseases these majorly has an impact in relation to the rate and absorption let's see one by one now so the first is about gastric disease so in case of gastric disease the influence of achlorhydria specifically saying about the decrease in gastric acid secretion and increasing the stomach ph on uh, this has a major impact on gastric emptying and drug absorption especially that of acidic drug such as aspirin which will be decreasing the absorption that has been found about the various studies so intestinal disease uh, two of the intestinal disorder which is related with malabsorption syndrome that influences the drug availability of celiac disease as well as Crohn's disease so, so celiac disease and the Crohn's disease are the condition which have an impact in malabsorption of the drug molecules next is about cardiovascular disease so saying about cardiovascular disease here uh, several changes several changes associated with uh, congestive heart, cardiac failure and uh, bioavailability of the drug as well as uh, the edema of the intestine decreasing the blood flow to the git gastric emptying rate altered ph altered gi ph and secretion as well as microbial flora this all has an impact which is associated with the congestive cardiac failure so as uh, the, as a patient suffers from congestive cardiac failure so ccf ultimately it affects all the other process thereby it creates a major impact in the uh, absorption of the drug next is about hepatic disease so this disorder such as hepatic cirrhosis influences the bioavailability mainly drug that undergoes considerably first pass metabolism so what are the drug which undergoing first pass metabolism so due to the impairment of uh, liver it may influences the bioavailability it may enhance or it may retards the bioavailability so some drugs which uh, specifically have a higher metabolisms are propanolol so this may get affect if in case of hepatic cirrhosis the next is about the blood flow to git so the git is an exclusively supplied by blood capillaries network and blood flow rate to git is 28 percentage of cardiac output so overall the blood outflow as it is one of the vital part so the major percentage of uh, a particular specific percentage of blood is being circulated to the gi tract so it is it majorly helps to maintain the sink condition as we have been discussed in the previous uh, presentation so what is sink condition what is non sink condition all these things so to maintain the sink condition and to create a concentration gradient for better drug absorption so this uh, blood circulation supports a lot so there is influence of blood effect on various types of drugs let's see now the first thing is about for highly lipid soluble drugs the blood flow and effects will be more whereas for many lipophilic drugs such as ethanol and glycerol the effect will be intermediate and polar drug such as ribitol will be having very low effect on in the bio, bioavailability as the blood flow will, will be very low in this particular component so these are the impact of uh, blood flow to the git in related to the drug absorption the next is about gastrointestinal contents so in case of gastrointestinal contents there are four some categories and the first let us discuss about food drug interaction so what are the food we are taking along with the drug how does it interact and how does it creates a problem in bioavailability and uh, distribution or ab sorry, absorption process the first thing some drugs such as aspirin paracetamol diclofenac nitrofurantoin digoxin so these all will be having a delayed absorption process in connection to the food and some decreased absorption will be noted when we are taking a drug such as penicillin erythromycin ethanol tetracycline and levodopa and increased absorption is found on uh, administering of uh, rhizofulvin 
diciform and some vitamins and uh, there is no effect we won't feel any uh, interactions uh, in to some drugs such as methyl dopa propyl thiourazole as well as sulfacomandin so these are the some conditions where we face no any interactions also there are some condition where a delayed or decreased drug absorption by the food is found and that is due to delayed gastric emptying which affected drug unstable in the stomach example penicillin or preventing the transit of entry coated tablets into the intestine which may be as long as 6 to 8 hours so some condition where it prevents it may have create a problem so that is what and the next is about formation of poorly soluble unabsorbable complex such as tetracycline calcium complex tetracycline with milk or tetracycline with calcium sand or something else which will be forming a complex thereby it won't be soluble and it won't be unabsorbable also the next is about increased viscosity due to food thereby preventing the drug dissolution and diffusion towards the absorption site so these are the condition where delayed or decreased drug absorption by the food will be taking place the next is increased drug absorption following a meal is due to increased time for dissolution of poorly soluble drugs so better time will be there for absorbing the poorly soluble drugs and enhanced solubility due to gastro gastrointestinal secretion like bile secretion will be better so it supports for better absorption and prolonged residence time and absorption at the absorption site such as water soluble vitamins have better absorption in this condition after meal last one is about increased lymphatic absorption so some drugs will be having better increased lymphatic absorption bile absorption will be much predominant in this condition after meal so these are all the various uh, factors which is related to food drug interaction the next the fluid volume so upon administering a drug with a large fluid volume it results better dissolution rapid gastric emptying and enhanced absorption so example erythromycin so erythromycin is better absorbed when taken with a glass of water under fasting condition than when taken with the meals so before uh, along with the meals it shows some low absorption when it is uh, showing a better absorption where it shows a better absorption in case of taking with a glass of water and during a fasting condition the next is about interaction of drug with normal gi constituents so other constituent which is present over so the gat contains a number of uh, normal constituents such as mucin which is a protective mucopolysaccharides that lines the complete gi mucosa and it interacts with some drugs specifically streptomycins and bile salts which will be affecting the absorption of lipid soluble drugs such as griseofulvin and vitamins so this is the condition where the drug will be interacting with the normal gi constituents well under the gastrointestinal content the last one is about drug drug interaction in this drug drug interaction there are two conditions one is physico chemical drug drug interaction and the first one about the physico chemical drug interaction is about adsorption some anti diarrheal preparation uh, which contains some adsorbent like kaolin kaolin pectin this prevents the absorption of many drug which is coadmixture with them such as uh, promazin and lincomycin so this is one condition the next is complexation so in case of complexation antacid and or mineral substituents containing heavy metals such as aluminum calcium iron magnesium or zinc that retards the absorption of tetracycline by forming an unabsorbable complex and similarly the anionic exchange resin uh, cholestyramine and cholestipol which binds to cholesterol metabolite and similarly the bile salts and a number of drug in the intestine will be preventing their absorption so this is one condition about the drug drug interaction related to complexation process the next is pH changes so basic drug will be having an impact in change of pH so co-administration of such drugs 
such as tetracycline with antacid uh, such as sodium bicarbonate results in elevation of stomach ph and hence decreases the dissolution rate and causes precipitation of drug so this is one condition related to the ph changes so the next factor to drug drug interaction is physiological drug drug interaction first is decreased gastrointestinal transit anticholinergics such as a propanthalin retards gastrointestinal motility and promotes absorption of drugs like ranitidine and digoxin whereas it delays the absorption of paracetamol and sulfamethoxazole the next is increased gastric emptying metaclopramide promotes gastrointestinal motility and enhances absorption of tetracycline and pivampicillin and levodopa so this is the other condition where the increased gastric emptying will be related to the physiological drug drug interaction the third one is altered gastrointestinal metabolism some antibiotics will be inhibiting the bacterial metabolism of drugs uh, such as erythromycin enhances the efficacy of digoxin so these are all the some examples which is interrelated to the drug, physiological drug drug interaction the last factor is pre systemic metabolism of aspas effect so as we know well there are two main reason which decreases the bioavailability one is absorption and another is permeation and interrelated to the permeation the factor which majorly affect the drug absorption drug administration is bioavailability is first pass effect so the first pass effect is a major thing it occurs in the liver and this may affect the problem so the loss of drug through biotransformation by such eliminating organ during its passage into the systemic circulation is called as first pass metabolism or pre systemic metabolism so there are some primary system which influences the pre systemic metabolism of drug those are uh, four one is luminal enzyme and there is gut wall enzyme and there is bacterial enzyme and hepatic enzyme let's discuss about them one by one the first is about luminal enzyme in case of luminal enzyme the pancreatic secretion which contains hydrolysis uh, which hydrolyzes the ester drugs like chloramphenicol palmitate into active chloramphenicol and peptidase which splits the amide linkage and inactivate the protein and polypeptides so this is one condition where it has been interlinked with the luminal enzymes of next is gut wall enzyme or mucosal enzyme in this condition the alcohol dehydrogenase will be inactivating the ethanol so this is one example of enzyme and sulfation of ethanol estradiol and isoprenaline so this is the other example in case of gut wall enzyme metabolism the next is bacterial enzyme so in case of bacterial enzyme sulfur salicin so this sulfur salicin is hydrolyzed to sulfapyridine and 5 amino salicylic acid by microbial enzyme of the colon and the enzyme hydrolyzes the conjugation of drug actively secreted by the bile example glucuronides of digoxin and oral contraceptives so mostly in case of this uh, bacterial enzymes all thing phase 1 phase 2 reaction these all undergo the process of first pass effect all these enzymatic action plays a major role in conversion of drug to an inactive metabolite or an active metabolite to an inactive metabolite this is what the process involved of the last one is about hepatic enzymes we know well there are several drugs which undergo first pass metabolism and uh, the highly extracted uh, drugs are isoprenaline propranolol allopranol and uh, pentoxifilin nitroglycerin digiltiazem nifedipine uh, lidocaine morphine so these drugs uh, have possess extensive first pass effect and because of this extensive first pass effect there will be very poor bioavailability oral bioavailability will be there so some of the drugs will be having better bioavailability whose first pass effect will be lesser and this is one of the major rate determining step in case of bioavailability the percentage of bioavailability 
so the drug which gets uh, metabolized in the first pass effect the remaining quantity only will be reaching the systemic circulation so this is what about the uh, first pass effect as well as pre systemic metabolism impact in involved is of well so hope you understood about the topics uh, which has been discussed today a simple as well as important one so whereas patient related factor has a major role in clinical studies clinical aspects and uh, drug absorption process so by this we are concluding this factors influencing drug bioavailability as well as absorption process and we will be seeing we will be discussing about the other concepts uh, in the upcoming presentations well upon conclusion let me conclude with this slide so this is uh, unfortunately a lockdown period we all been locked over here so most of you have enough time to think over what is going around in and around you so uh, optimist always see an opportunity in all stages in all conditions so be an optimist so this uh, lockdown may outcome in some un predictable manner we may not predict because it's going to be a uh, complete uh, collapse in all the systems in all the uh, administration in all process we can't predict it it may completely get reverse everything may get reverse may it might get reverse so being an optimist predict the future how it would be have a thought assume yourself how the world might change off so uh, as we have several eras before after like this so this corona effect may have an effect as uh, before corona and after corona like that it may have a historical impact also who knows uh, everything may get collapse or everything may get uh, remodified uh, the most popular most predominant countries or dominating country developed countries are struggling and uh, small countries are surviving better they are supporting the developed nations so it it's all getting over so with this let me say about use this lockdown period to analyze yourself have a uh, clean study about your goal know what is your intention is of what you are going to do so a new opportunity a new platform is going to be open soon so by opening uh, in this new platform what you are going to do what you are going to succeed think about it so to get succeed first you set a goal so always have a smart goal so your goal should be very smart and uh, have a better plan of it have a better plan about your goal list out all your intentions what you have to be how it is possible what are all the do's what are all the don'ts list out all these things and uh, try to work it out get solutions from findings what are all the problems you are going to face decide yourself predict yourself and by predicting try to get overcoming that uh, aspects also stick on to it most important thing is stick on to it uh, most of us set goals but we won't stick to it uh, most uh, the failures uh, uh, the most of the failures are those who are not sticking to their uh, goal are not committing to it to what they desired as of so that is what the problem with the most of the failures of so always stick on to it as i said your goal should be much smarter smarter in the sense the s it should be specific your goal is your should be direct and it should be detailed and it should be meaningful so that's what it should be much specific in the smart and the m in smart defines about the measurable so your goal should be a quantifiable and it should be trackable progress of success so what way how you are going to quantify it so you quantify your goals 
so that is what measurable it should be your goal should be measurable there should be a limit there should be a uh, level of achievement should be there and the third thing in your smartness of goal is attainable so that a is about attainable your goal is should be realistic and you have should have some tools and resources to attain it it's not just of dreaming which is uh, not at all possible we should dream big but it should be should be a realistic one so that's what it should be attainable and it should be realistic and so by as it is realistic there will be some tools or some supporting evidences to reach over it or resources will be reaching it so find out the resources what are all the resources how we can achieve it resources all these things and the fourth aspect in your smart goal setting is relevant so your goal should be always aligned with your thoughts with your mission with your internal desire so always make it relevant to your field relevant to your field or relevant to your interest of your so that's what the thing is and the last one most important thing in the goal setting is t time based so your goal should have a deadline there are goals which is of short term and long term so it's up to you to analyze yourself first you have a short term goal try to achieve it produce all your plans make it smart have a smart goal setting try to do it achieve it if you are achieving it then you plan for a long term goal which will be helpful for you to get succeed in your career so with this hope it's going beyond the limit thank you all for your patient listening be smart design a smart goal reach your goal with your smartness and let success be your path in your future career thank you all